My name's Ariel Bringle, and I approve this message. <laughs> How y'all doing? Nick Bringle here, and today we're talking about how you can achieve that big, beautiful, soft, diffused light source like you see, hopefully, right now. So we've talked a lot recently about lighting and using uh, the aperture lantern or the mini dome or um, you know the mini pavo tube as your key light and adding all these practicals and creating depths and layers of the scene for lighting and how that really does uh, kind of trump almost all of the other things that are involved in your production other than probably audio. Uh, so today I wanted to talk about another experiment, another DIY uh, low budget look and feel that you can go for and that's creating your own really large piece of diffusion by using a bed sheet, your key light, and then a couple of stands to set it up. One of the things I talk a lot about on this channel is experimenting and being your own scientist. And so, uh, well, you know, filmmaking relative, I'm no scientist, but uh, I, I have this space here that I shoot all of my YouTube talking head and probably other things that you've seen. And so I have the ability to kind of manipulate a bunch of things and go right to the computer, plug in my hard drive and edit and look and see how things react to color grading and how I want Want them to look and so uh, I preach that a lot and I still think that that's a really important aspect of filmmaking that if you have a space where you can set things up and do tests and kind of build a bank of knowledge when it comes to different setups and different scenarios that you might be in when you go out into the world and film for clients or documentaries or films, whatever it is that you're doing, that you can, uh, you know, you won't have that time to experiment when you're out shooting probably. There's not gonna be a lot of test shots. So what we're gonna do now is go downstairs and my beautiful wife has agreed to be our muse for this video and we're basically gonna use her as a subject and do a few different scenarios and setups with this large uh, bed sheet and creating a really beautiful, soft, diffused light source. Okay, so we are working in DaVinci Resolve. We're gonna be color grading and walking through a few different clips with Ariel downstairs and we'll talk through the setup as well. So the first setup we did was a 90 degree angle directly parallel right next to Ariel's face as you can see from uh, the footage that I got quickly with my iPhone uh, just so you could get a sense of the room and the space and where the lights and everything were and for all of these shots um, basically kept her in the same place just kind of maybe rotated her or moved her a little bit so keep that in mind with the practicals in the back the pavo tubes and everything I just you know I maneuvered them around just to kind of complement what we were doing that was not the most sought after idea was to make it perfect I'm, we're really focusing on the key light and how it looks on the face and in the overall image how it it's just a different look and feel than using the soft box, which you will see, or even just a direct beam of light. So um, we're going to be in this very first clip. Like I said, you, you could tell right off the bat, I haven't done any kind of color grading or anything. And you can just see that line directly down. Uh, it's not harsh. It's a soft line, but it's pretty obvious. So that's the first clip. Um, I sort of fast forwarded through a few items to um, save you and myself from the long, long, long talk that we would be having about masking and doing all of that. But we have applied Dehancer and we have worked completely through Dehancer as far as color is concerned. And basically I started out by you know, applying the input and what kind of camera. So for us, it's the Blackmagic Pocket 6K, the Gen 5 Color, ISO, the base 400. And then from there we moved down and I applied the Agfa uh, Color 100 and I pushed it um, all the way back. And then we had some expand where we pushed the blacks and the whites just a little bit because then when we moved down to our print, we are going to use some tonal contrast, which actually separates the blacks and whites that doesn't separate them. It makes them more like 
Harsh isn't the word either. It kind of solidifies their presence even more um, using tonal contrast. And then color density, I love using color density because you can just crank this up. I mean, this is it with nothing and then I crank it up to 45 and it really does, it really just adds a dash, a dash of saturation that's more complimentary and not overdoing it. And then other than that, film grain, positive film grain, a little more, a little about 11, 12% and everything else just kind of leave default. I didn't do any halation or boom, bloom or anything like that. And that's, that's it. So that's the 90 degrees straight over. And that is a beautiful oh boy. That is a good wife right there. Um, okay. We're going to move on to the next clip. All right, we'll go Ektar. So this is Kodak Ektar 100. And as you can see, just applying it straight up creates a much more cool image. And if you push it, it gets a little warm. If you pull it, it gets a little cooler. So mm, we'll just let it stay cool. That's That works for me. That's totally fine. So um, the image, I'm not going to mess with the expand. We're just going to go down to the tonal contrast. Yep, get that. We're going to add a lot more color density in this one. Let's say like a little, yeah, that looks good. Okay. We're going to raise the exposure. I don't want to lose all the blacks in here. You see, this is another area up in here that you can really see what retain, what information is being retained. Um, Cause obviously this, is the key area right here. You can see that fall off and it's almost difficult to know what kind of source light is that coming from because it's so soft. And I really actually like the, uh, the reflection in her eyes there. It's a, it's kind of an interesting, it's not what you would typically see. You usually see, you know, bar, a circle, there's kind of a specific look. And this, this is something different that I don't, I haven't normally seen. So I'm talking about that. I'm looking at myself and uh, we're gonna leave that like it is. So Kodak Ektar 100. Okay, so I wanted to cut in just for a second and give you uh, the look and feel of what's going on here with this shot. So in a moment, I'm gonna cut to the Canon 10 to 18 millimeter lens that will give you a massively wide shot and show you everything that's going on around me and we'll talk about this setup and all of the gear and how it works and you know, all that cool stuff. Okay, so now we are on the super wide shot and don't mind my beautiful sweater. This is vintage, it's antique and um, I don't know, I got angry one time, I turned green, I don't know what happened. So anyway, here we are. Um, this looks a lot more ridiculous than the tighter shot. And so what you can see here is obviously I have my microphone, the NT3, uh, just you know a foot from my mouth basically. And I have this ridiculous small piece of uh, cine foil, a little bit of negative fill. And then as you can see in the shot, you could see the Godox uh, VL150 and then attached to it are the barn doors. And that's just helping to control some of the spill um, around the room. And it is the middle of the day, it's quite sunny. It's getting a little hot down there, but that's okay. Uh, about 20% power that the Godox is on and it's going through this basic bed sheet and then I actually have this other um, glossy kind of diffusion that I've just clamped up on there as well and I'm not sure that it's doing a whole lot but it's definitely helping soften the image even more and then behind me I have the mini Pavo tube that's just giving me a little bit of a rim hair light to kind of create a little more depth and then as, as usual there's multiple LEDs and different things behind me that are just helping to create that depth. So this is really uh, all that is going on. As you can see, it's a, this stand is actually made for backdrops and things like that. I don't really use backdrops ever. So I just set this up with the rods and clamp up this 
sheet. That's literally it. I'm also going to show you if I take away this bed sheet and all this diffusion, what it looks like with just the barn doors and the Godox just blasting right at my face. And then I'll also put on the mini dome from Aperture to give you an idea of exactly um, the look and put them side by side. So you can really see the fall off and how much more natural this will actually look. I mean, um, you know, we're constantly trying to use windows and things to help motivate the light for our scene because our eyes naturally are going to, you know, if there's no window there and then there's like this light coming from that angle, typically we're going to be, you know, questioning uh, the realism. But with YouTube videos, of course, that's not as important. So it's more in the film world or when you're shooting interviews and things to make it look as natural as possible. So I'm gonna go take this down and we're gonna blast the light into my face and I'm not gonna change anything with the camera. We're leaving it, I believe we're at F3.7 and uh, we're gonna leave it at F3.7. If I have to adjust the light, I will. Right now we're at 20% and then we'll put on the aperture dome and we'll see what that looks like. So. Let's go do that. So I turned the light down to 5% and it is right out of frame, blasting right into my face. Not even really at an angle, it's almost completely parallel. Yeah, it's a little bit in front of me. Uh, but as you can see, this is a specific look and feel if you're going for it, but it creates much more uh, harsh shadows and lines on my face. And it's not as flattering if you're trying to make something look as you know natural and real as possible. Okay, so now we have the mini dome two, and I have not moved the light. It is still at the same distance away. The power is up to 15%. We're still at F3.7. And so you can see this is a little bit better, but it's still a lot of shadows, uh, a lot of, you know, a lot of stuff going on differently from that big, soft, diffused source. So um, again, just an example for you to see, nothing more. Okay, so for the last one that we'll walk through the color grading, we have shifted Arial even more of an angle and uh, to kind of have that interview-ish setup. Now, I'm not shooting from the, from the shadow side, which I would typically recommend. We're somewhere in the middle. Um, but as you'll see, the way that she's kind of turned and, um, and, and looking that it, it kind of makes sense. And also that light source is so big and soft that it almost just doesn't even matter what direction you're coming from as long as you're exposing properly. So what we're gonna do differently about this one with this one is we are gonna edit it um, without Dehancer uh, as far as color is concerned. So we are gonna add uh, Joel Familaro's neutral uh, neutral LUT. The best LUTs are by Joel Familaro. He, I don't know what he's doing over there, but he has literally the best LUTs in the world. You don't need to buy the red cameras because Joel is delivering it to you, to your house. Is that right? And as you can see, I add that and it has, you know, kind of darkened darkened this side quite a bit which is fine i feel like right off the get-go it looks pretty natural um so we'll leave that alone we had you know we got the neutral and now we're going to put dehancer but we're not going to be using the film stocks or anything uh anything up there so uh right away i always again turn off film grain it always automatically puts it on so we're going to go to color density and 45 is always a good range we'll add a little bit of tonal contrast because like i said a little more dramatic and in this area on the right side of her face here that's what we're focusing on is kind of this area everything else we don't really want to focus on it's nice to have you know practicals in the background and whatnot but we want people to be focused here um kind of like this shot i have i have the light right out of frame here the lantern and you know if if i'm on this shot I, you know i'm obviously talking so we're focusing here there's a lot of good things happening around me but we want people to focus on the subject matter so um it's okay that it's dark for me and as you can see you know in our in our uh, scopes here 
it's a pretty well balanced image. Uh, um, so what are you going to do? Now that I've kind of walked you through uh, color grading a few of those, you can kind of see how the two complement each other, the production side and the post-production side, because the lighting is so important to be able to uh, manipulate your subject, your scene, how you want it to look. And when you sit down at the computer and you're color grading, you now also see uh, how important it is to be able to work within the shadows, no pun intended, but really to work within the shadows, within the blacks and whites. And um, to me, those are the most important pieces. The color comes out of that perfect white balance and exposure and, and getting those skin tones correct and then finding the color that you want to use but without the light and having that contrast of shadows whether soft or harsh your image will look terrible like we've shown before just you know a light blasting you know you might as well just use house lights and have zero depth and it'll look flat and terrible just don't even color grade it it's useless so you got to experiment and do things like this because you will quickly um, like I mentioned have this bank of knowledge to be able to set up and know what you can do in post when seeing something on set and um, yeah so that it's pretty exciting yeah so now what we'll do is I'm gonna put three different shots side by side so you can see them and it just gives you an idea of where the lights positioned and how it looks uh, with the same beautiful face right there in the frame. Now I'm also showing you a couple of other examples. One is with the Aperture Mini Dome 2 and that's a pretty standard setup. A lot of YouTubers, a lot of interviews are shot with the Mini Dome, the regular Aperture Dome and you know it, it, there it's a beautiful uh, piece of equipment and I use it all the time not as much as my lantern but i use it a lot and so that's one that's this shot that you're seeing now this next one is without any bed sheet this is just direct pure godox vl 150 blasting directly into the subject and then without any key light to kind of give you a base layer of where it all began and then built up from there so there's quite a few options that you have when lighting for video, it's it's an unlimited, uh, it's unlimited, really. Okay, well, thank you for watching this video if you made it this long. Uh, don't forget to subscribe if you're not. That's pretty important. Just take a moment, click the button, hit the like button, and drop a comment down below. And as always, there are links in the description um, for Dehancer, Motion VFX, the Phantom LUTs, anything and everything that we talked about today plus all of the gear that I use and um, you know if you click on anything you purchase it that obviously helps me helps this channel until next time go create something go experiment in your own space with lighting and sound and have fun because that is exactly what we're doing is uh, having a lot of fun